Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Superpower Spotlight, where we show coaches, healers, and other inspired messengers how to use the energy of your superpowers, your special gifts, to get your work out into the world in a big way so that you can reach the people you're meant to serve and have the income you so deserve. I'm your host, Kim Wilborn of SuperpowerSuccessSystem.com, where you can get a free Superpower Success Starter Kit. You'll also want to check out my Superpower Breakthrough, the free session that helps you get clear on your own superpower, your own special gifts, and helps you show and helps show you how to let its power move you into the spotlight so that your work can transform the world. It's July 10th, 2012, and today our guest is Gina Gabellini. Gina Gabellini is the co-author of Life Lessons for Mastering the Law of Attraction with Eva Gregory, Mark Victor Hansen, and Jack Canfield, and she excels in assisting high-achieving entrepreneurs and their teams to leverage fun, systems, and intention for high-octane results. Her coaching marries vision, divine guidance, and proven strategies, and her company, Masterpiece Coaching, that's peace spelled P-E-A-C-E, provides coaching, programs, and products that will transform the way you operate your business and your life. Today on the show, Gina will reveal the secrets to mastering client attraction and give us the inside scoop on how to be a magnet to clients using strategies that are authentic, easy to implement, and profitable. Welcome to the show, Gina. Awesome. So happy to be here. Yay. Yay. Well, I'm excited about everything you have to share today, and I'm curious, how did you come to understand the things that you're going to share with us today? Uh, as they say, the school of hard knocks. <laughs> I, uh, I, when I started my business, I was just very super passionate, very super, <laughs> and I, you know, I just was excited. And I, I'm, you know, I'm a coach, and at the time when I started, I was a life coach. I, he said. Give me anybody. If they have any issue, any goals, I'll coach them. I don't care who they are, what they want. I just want to coach. I I can relate. (laughs) And I got clients, and it was easy. And because I just was, you know, I didn't really care about if I got clients. It was more about the education of what coaching is, because at that time that was was very new still, and people didn't understand what it was. So my whole perspective was, let's just teach people what it is, because clearly they will fall in love with it. Mm-hmm. And some did, some didn't, but I did fill my practice. And at that time, I, you know, I didn't charge that much, so I don't think it was a big stretch for a lot of people. I think the big stretch was, you know, do I really need this? Are you sure? What, I mean, what's the value that you can give? And then later, I, as the more knowledge I gained about um, what it takes to be a business owner and all the things you should be doing, that's when things got a little out of control. I started mm-hmm. working a lot. And I thought that if I wasn't completing the things on my action list, my to-do list, then I felt like I was always behind and that I was leaving money on the table and that if I wasn't always filling my pipeline consistently that, you know, the money would would dry up. And even though I didn't require a lot of money in those days, I wasn't married, I didn't have children, I didn't own a house, I was still always concerned about getting ahead and it didn't feel like I was doing that and I felt like I had so much knowledge I knew and I knew what was possible. I knew it could be easier. I knew that I could be successful. And the more I strived for it, of course, Mm -hmm. the more unfulfilled I got. And um, I got to a point where I I was really maxed out. I was working all hours of the day because I could. I didn't have any distractions. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have a man in my life. And so I was either working really hard or playing really hard. And, but I was never chilling out throughout my work day. It became work, which is, you know, against, it's against the rules. You know, we all get into business because we think, oh, here's an opportunity for me to have more freedom, make more money, and do it my way. And even though I thought I could do it my way, I was really, I didn't know it at the time, but I was really doing it other people's way. And at some point, I don't know how I bumped into her, but I I bumped into this coach, and um, she said, let's do a trade. And at that time, I I was past that. I'm like, I'm not doing any bartering, (laughs) blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I think you've got something. You can help me get money and clients, and I need to help you be present in the moment. And I thought, 
All right, fine. Everything else I'm doing isn't working. I'd already hired several coaches that year, and everybody was just coaching me around time management stuff because they thought, well, if I could just get organized. The mm. thing was is I was organized. I was just trying to pack in more. Like if you, if I created more time, I would just fill it with more stuff to do. <laughs> so it wasn't working. I still felt the same no matter how organized I was. And um, I worked with for four months solid, and it was totally torturesome to me about – being very, very present and not, not no longer striving. And in fact, when I used to talk about law of attraction, like, okay, well, here's the new thing I'm inspired to do and get done, and here's what I want to manifest. She's like, no, 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 no. We're not going to talk about that. Now you're future focused again. I'm like, but you don't understand law of attraction. And she said, no, <laughs> you don't understand. You're always forward thinking. You're always in the future. So I really fought her, you know, and I, I I cursed under my breath at her. I called her names behind her back. I couldn't, I wanted to fire her. I was a very <laughs> bad client. And at some point I think I got it. I, I finally something clicked to what she was talking about. And it was about that same time I had decided um, through a class that I was teaching, we were having people, um, we were telling them to take peer pleasure days. It was one of their assignments. You know, to take a day and go do something that they normally don't do to go take care of themselves. But it had to be all about them. Like, no, if somebody was to join them and, and be a partner in this peer pleasure day, they had to totally serve the person. So I started, I started doing those um, frequently. And pretty soon my business partner and I said, what if we just did them every Friday? Fridays will be peer pleasure day. And I thought, all right, that's going to be a stretch for me, not working on a Friday. And um, so since my whole focus was about being present in the moment, I started taking off on Fridays. Was it hard? At first, it was very hard. And um, But it was, I think I started during the summer, so it was a little easier because I own a ski boat. So I just thought, okay, well, I'll go skiing on Fridays. So it forced me, you know, I got out of the house. I wouldn't be tempted by, you know, the computer or anything. And then it was working so well, at some point I decided that I was going to do that on Mondays too. Monday would be a day off. If I wanted to work because I was inspired, I would, but I wouldn't take any appointments. And if I wanted to take a four-day weekend, then I could do it, and I would never interfere with work. And that was the very first year that I made the six-figure mark. And so it was a big aha moment. And I didn't know. I didn't know that. Um, I knew that things were going well financially, but it didn't feel that much different for me. I just felt relieved. That was my biggest thing. I felt, and it wasn't even about the money. It was more about how am I going, living moment to moment in my business. I wasn't worried about money anymore, and I wasn't focused on money. And I think that was the shocking thing. You know, one, I was taking all these days off, which was highly unusual for me. And two, I was no longer focused on making big bucks. I had, I did set my intention that year that I wanted to make six figures. Mm-hmm. But the truth was, is I had said that several years before that too. <laughs> I, that was always the intention. But at this time was the first time I really set it. I let go, and I didn't focus there. I didn't. I wasn't working hard to get there, and I wasn't saying, okay. How am I going to make this happen? Because I'm a big doer. I'm a big, I like to strive. I like goals. I like to move fast. Um, I like the game of business. But I didn't understand that what I was doing was, you know, it was a different game. I was playing the game of not enough, not enough, not enough. Whatever I'm doing is not enough. Whatever I have is not enough. How do I get more? Because at some point this is all going to get taken away if I don't keep moving. So even though I thought I was doing the right things. I even taught law of attraction during this time. That's what the hilarious part is. But I guess I, I would say, I, I've never thought about this before, but I guess I could, you could say I was in the dark side of the law of attraction. I was actually using against myself. Right. You know, I should be able to create this. And if I could just do more, and if I would just, you know, focus hard enough, if I would just do it right. So that was my big aha lesson was, oh, the more I have fun, the more I just be present and think about what I really, truly inspired to do. Um, And I could still make goals, but I think I had to really calibrate back and, like, swing far to the left and say, okay, I've been been really hardcore on my goals and my intentions. Let's soften this up. And now, as I saw it work, so every year I just got more trusting in it. So now I'm able to just, I'm able to do, play both sides, able to make the goals 
and at the same time have fun on the way. So that's that's kind of how I came to be like, oh, okay, this is how easy it can be. And it wow. was a different model than I had ever seen anybody else do before because everybody I was surrounded by were all six-figure earners, and I think that's kind of what got me thinking, I'm not doing enough. Well, if these people are creating seven figures, why couldn't I? I know my stuff rocks. I know I'm giving great value. I think I'm giving more value than some of these people. How come I can't do seven figures? Well, I'm curious, how did that balance and present moment focus change your coaching itself? Uh, Obviously, I was able to start being with people in a different way, and I wasn't, you know, if if I'm thinking that one way to, you know, the only way to get to a goal is to be in action, you know I'm coaching people that way. Mm-hmm. So I think what I did is I allowed, I, I started giving people permission to relax. And I think that's not only what, ch- like, it made me even more successful because they started getting their, more of their goals, but it was so much easier to meet people where they were at and not say, okay, so... What would feel good? What would feel good was saying, like, how can you get out of your funk? How can you get out of your funk? Which feels like a little bit of pressure if you're in a funk. Yeah. It's more about what would feel good right now or what would feel better than this or what do you, what would help you relax rather than what can you do to move forward. Mm. You know, you're still moving people forward. It's just a different way of being in it and getting them there. And it actually obviously works faster with less pain when you're meeting people right where they're at. So it was huge. It was it impacted everything I did. And oh, I, I love. You know. Go ahead. Wow! I just said I love that. So that That's was awesome. the the big the big transformation life. You know, wow! And I did. I actually that year it was a huge jump. It wasn't like I went from ninety thousand to a hundred thousand. I went beyond six figures, and I I literally tripled my income in one year. So talk about how a quantum, you know, we all think quantum leaps are huge and hard. The truth was is when you're relaxing into it, it just start the momentum starts building. And if you're not focused on quantum leap, it happens over time. But when you look back, you know, a year is not too long. When you, when you get the thing that you want the most at the end and you look back and you go, wow, I, that was fine that it took a year. I'm so cool with that. My life feel better. I'm more relaxed. And look, I got money too. This is great. <laughs> well, how do you apply this to your secrets on mastering client attraction? So uh, client attraction obviously is the, the hardest part I think about client attraction is the more you want them or the more you need them, you know, new clients and you want them ideal, the more that you almost you begin to push them away because there's that yearning piece that mm. comes in. You know, we go, oh, I just want more. Gosh, these clients I have, you know, they're not paying enough or – they only come, you know, once or twice and they don't want to continue on or they're not they're not continually repeat customers. And we make we kind of do something similar as to what I was doing is it's not enough or it's not good enough. So one of the things I tell people to do immediately is to relax about where they're at. I mean, okay, so here I am. I may not like it, it may not be enough, but let's just let's just lay it out on the table. This is what we got. So how do we want to be about it? Because this is the current reality. And it doesn't mean it has to be the continued reality, but since we're here, we might as well make peace with it. It's like, so it is. So what? Mm -hmm. So, you know, just like level the playing field. It's okay that we're here. And then two is to start, and this this is a trick I learned because later on after I had had this phenomenal aha and tripled my income, there were several years later where I had gotten into a really bad relationship and I basically had this guy threatening my life, and he's doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And I stopped paying attention to my business, and I was living in fear about, was he going to find me? What's he going to do to me next? What's he going to steal? What's he going to ruin of my property? How is he going to make my life hell? So I was so focused on that that my business tanked. And uh, I got into a heap of debt. And so I became the person who was in fear. Like, oh, my God, I don't have enough clients. Am I ever going to get out of debt? This is the most debt I've ever been in. Here I am. You know, at that time I was called, you know, the extreme abundance coach, and there was nothing extremely abundant at that time in my business at all. And that was really hard. So what I began doing was just really appreciating the few clients that I had. 
because mm-hmm. at that time I had, you know, my long-term clients that were still with me and loving me and getting value, but nothing new was coming in. I wasn't filling classes. My creativity was terrible. I had no new creativity. I, I couldn't even think of new products or new teleclasses to offer, and that was always something that kind of kept me energized. I was like, ooh, let's create something new and fun and different. Nothing was coming. For over a year, no new ideas, which was extremely painful to me. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought, okay, i got to stop trying hard to come up with a new idea because that ain't working. And I just began focusing on the few clients that I had and really appreciating them. And I began even getting began giving them even better service than I'd ever given them. Like a VIP customer service was my motto. Okay, even if I have three or four clients, they are getting VIP customer service. And I began doing that. And I didn't strive anymore to bump up my income or even get new clients. I just paid really good attention to those. And then I just took control over over other areas of my life that I knew I, I felt more in control and more powerful with. For instance, I had just moved into a new house, and because I was so depressed about the state of my finances, I really didn't unpack things. I didn't. Ha- there were still pictures that weren't hanging on the wall after six months. I thought, you know what? I got all the time in the world. Business is busy. I just let me get organized. Let me. This is something that I enjoy and I feel that I have control over. Let me do that. And that's all I did. And I began focusing on paying off my debt a little tiny bit at a time. So I started beginning more in my power. And little by little, guess what? Because I wasn't focused on getting new clients and focused on what can I do to get ahead, I doubled my income that year. Mm. And it was like, okay. Um, it was a big lesson, too, in the power of momentum. You know, a lot of times we think, oh, well, especially around law of attraction, if I if I can just get in alignment with what I say I want, then this should all happen pretty quickly. And what happens is, for most of us, is if we don't manifest fast, we think we're not doing something right, and then we get into resistance, and then we actually do stop the flow. Mm-hmm. When, you know, behind the scenes, it could have been all coming together if I would have just kept on track and kept the focus and waited a little bit longer, well, you know, law of attraction, right, it's like what you focus on is what you attract, and sometimes we're working our way back into getting aligned with the thing that we want. You know, we've still got our little self-talk that's going on in the background, and manifestation isn't always in the instantaneous, right, because we're still trying to get our emotions lined up, and so I just held out. I was like, you know what, I don't care if this takes me three years, I'm going to hold course. And normally I am the girl that gets frustrated if I don't get instantaneous results. So I think that's the big thing is when you're looking for more ideal clients or you're looking to fill up your pipeline is if you feel like what you're doing really truly is congruent with who you are and you're enjoying it, even if you're doing some new marketing and you're loving it, but it doesn't get instantaneous results, but it feels good to you, then I would say hold the course. Because a lot of times we think, oh, that strategy didn't work, or you know, I, I had a you know I had a client meeting with a potential client, and it seemed like it was going great, but I haven't heard back. That must mean that they're not going to hire me. You know, we do all these crazy things that cut off the flow, and so if we want to get back into alignment, it really is about appreciating what we have and appreciating the little trickles that come in too. You know, I have several things that I sell. I have this uh, journal that. Uh, an inspired action, by the way. I thought it was the stupidest thing I could be spending my time on one year. I was um, I was pregnant, and a new baby was coming, and I had this inspiration, and I needed money at the time. And I thought, but I have this inspiration to create this, this daily journal. And I thought, Gina, you should be focusing on the bigger ticket items. that you're, You know, get more money in the door. But, boy, I feel inspired to do this journal. So I made that thing perfect, and I loved it, and it was just this, I had, you know, was like, wow, this is so much fun. I loved the end product. It was beautiful. It was perfect. It, I made it for me because I wanted to use it daily. I couldn't find a daily journal that kind of would set my tone for the day, and get me fired up, set my intentions, but also, you know, organize my day. Like, what are my six big action steps I want to do for the day? I wanted it all in one place rather than doing it everywhere. It's my biggest selling to this day product that I, you know, ever has been. And so I get would get, you know, in hard times, you know, when you're looking for the big money, you're like, God, 
Okay, I had one client book something little. I had one small purchase or only sold a few hundred dollars this week. Rather than being bummed out about it, I'm loving it. Like, oh, cool, I got a $20 sale right on. Woo! That's <laughs> evidence, right? That's evidence that you're on the right track. So well, you like, talk about the number one thing you must do before any marketing to ensure return on investment. Is that part of it? The number one thing that you do before any marketing is actually setting your intent. Mm. You know, I was just talking to a client this morning. She was like, okay, I think I'm going to hire a search engine optimization person to work on my website. I only need an SAO person, and i got to get this dialed in. And I said, okay, hold on. Let's wait. I know that, you know, because we all like to do what's hot and sexy and what we've been told that we should do for our business, right? We've, we all, If you have a website, you're always told you should do SEO on it. You'll get more hits. And I right. said, you know, let's be really intentional. What do you want to create from this? And what's really the strategy behind it? Like how, where do we plan on being and what are our key words? And let's, let's get really clear on what's the intention behind it and what do you want as a result? She's like, good point. Because even though we say we're going to do something like that, it seems the right thing, we're still doing these random acts of marketing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, that's a good idea, let's do it. And it's like, wait a minute, we're not really setting our intention for how we want to feel while we're doing it, who we want to attract from it. We're just thinking, oh, my God, just maybe that will get me more money is usually what we're thinking. Mm-hmm. And um, we're not being intentional about it. Or we're not doing it in a way that's completely congruent. You know, a lot of people say, well, I should be doing an e or I should be doing a blog. But that just sounds icky to me. And I said, well, then let's not do it. You know, there's lots of ways to attract people in your pipeline. And if you're doing marketing that you really aren't lined up with or it doesn't feel fun, the results won't produce as much as they potentially could if you were excited about it. Hmm. You know, you could that do- also has to do with getting into your client's head, right? It does, and our biggest thing, and the, the only way to actually get in your client's head is to actually connect with what I call is your inner business expert. You know, it's that place we all have one. It's, you know, the same as your divine guidance higher self, except we. it seems like that, you know, resource, the biggest resource that we have, that place inside of us that, you know, can be tapped into infinite wisdom, when it comes to business, it's like people get amnesia. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I'm saving my spirituality for when I'm using it with my clients or when I'm off, you know, I'm off work. Then I'll Right, it applies to everything else but that. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute. This is uh, your inner business expert. You can just sit back. And before I do anything, whether before I write an article or I'm creating, like, an agenda for, you know, a new class, I'll just sit down and go, okay, set my intentions, connecting in with my inner business expert, I, and I just state my intention. I want the guidance to say exactly what I need to say to attract my perfect people or to make the people in this course have an amazing experience. Here's my learning um, objectives for them, and um, let it be the perfect thing that they need to hear, and let this be easy. Because a lot of times, especially if I notice I'm resisting something, maybe it's fear, maybe I feel like, oh, i got to say the right thing to make it impactful, that's when I go, okay, hold on. Do not start with that attitude. Let's make this easy. Let's just tap in. And I might not even get a clear little download in my head of what I'm supposed to say, but I'll just start typing, and Mm -hmm. it's always perfect. Always perfect. So the thing that we all need to do is start tapping into that inner business expert before we do any marketing, and then also be really intentional about for the sake of what, why am I doing this and what I'm hoping to gain and the other thing is a, a more business-minded thing, which is how does this fit in with my overall plan or strategy? Because most people, you know, we're not taught business. We get into business because we're excited about what we're offering. Especially right. people, you know, coaches, spiritual healers. We all like, we just love our art. We just love what we do. Yeah, the business part can be a real stumbling block. And, you know, we don't ask ourselves simple questions like, wait a minute, what if I have a marketing funnel, what? Is that funnel, like what do I want to offer and how does, if someone comes in, let's say for a healing or a coaching session, when they come in, they get get a little bit of what they need, right? But what would be the next step that would take them even farther? And we don't know how one service or product leads to the next and we don't know how to get people in our pipeline. We're just trying random stuff. We're going to networking meetings. We're doing whatever. We're just doing, like I said, it it might be inspired, but it also could be random. And random things have you going in different directions, and there's no clear path. And a funnel is just 
exactly what it sounds like, right? If we have a funnel mapped out, and it's easier than it seems, as spiritual people go, what, a marketing funnel, what the heck is she talking about? It's so easy when we just say, okay, what are the steps? We want person, someone comes in and they meet us and greet us, what do we want next for them? Are we giving them, sending them to our e-zine or a blog? Are they going to get a little 15-minute session with us? What's the first step? And then what, what's the second? And what's the third? And what's the fourth? And having a really clear path. It's really easy, and it changes the way you market. It's well, not how do you simple. apply that to pricing? Well, pricing is, you know, there's lots of, you know, I, this is my belief. So, it is, obviously, if you believe it, then it works for you. If you don't believe it, then don't do it. I, and I think that most people who are healers and people who are serving other people, coaches, We want to help people, and I personally don't like leaving people out in the dark, so I offer stuff at all price ranges. You know, I have books, and I have things that are, you know, $20. I have all my free stuff that I write, and I do interviews so people can get information that way. And then I have, you know, low entry point things. I have medium price things, and I have the super expensive stuff. And, there, you know, that gives something for everybody, and then I'm leveraging my time, right, because the cheaper stuff is more of the group thing or it's things that I don't have to have hands on. Like I have products that are 300 bucks. They're mm-hmm. super comprehensive, but I don't have to be there now. So I think it's cool to offer people in all price ranges because I can't tell you how many people have bought a cheap thing and less expensive thing, like a $20 item or a $100 item, fallen in love with my stuff, got some results, and then later, sometimes years later, and that's okay with me, then they become a client or they buy a higher ticket item. So I think, you know, you're you're giving people a little taste here and there, even with the inexpensive stuff, or even your articles. I've had people say, oh, my gosh, I've been on your e list. I've been reading your articles for 10 years, and this, this program spoke to me, and it was at the right price point. I'm like, wow, that's that's dedication right on. So you just well, never that know. reminds me of what you said earlier about staying the course. Yes. Like you just never know. Every interaction, you're building a fan, and that fan may not have time. It may They just might love you but not feel called to action. But it doesn't mean that if you just keep providing great value that at some point they're going to become a client. I'm really, I've, I've seen that happen time and time again. You just don't know where people are going to come in from. Sometimes they come from the craziest places, but it's your energy that's really bringing them in. We think it's about marketing. I'm sorry, but your vibration and how you're feeling and your emotion and your thoughts trump all marketing. So in the end, marketing really doesn't matter, but marketing obviously is a fun way for us to get visibility and for people to see us in ways that they might not have. So that's why it's really important that we're loving the marketing that we're doing because it's all vibration. It's not It's not how you do it or even what you do. It's just a matter of, am I digging on this? Do I like it? Does it work for me? Does it make me happy? Does it seem fun? Am I excited that I did this strategy? Wow. Well, I know you've got a program called Flashpoint, and I want to hear more about it. Okay. And just really quickly, Flashpoint, um, if you go to businessflashpoint.com, you can go check out all the details. But this program was because I, I created it because I was inspired. I looked at my marketing funnel, and I was listening to feedback of people on my list, and they say, Gina, you always say your programs, you're offering this and that, and it's inexpensive, but it's still too expensive for us. And I thought, gosh, I do have a gap. It's either the $20 things or it's the hundreds and thousands of dollars things, right? It's, you know, thousands mm-hmm. of dollars and there's a few things in between, but there's no entry point to, like, actually get live coaching from me for inexpensive. So I created this business. Um, it's called Flashpoint, Ignite Your Six-Figure Business, and it's a it's $97 a month. You can come in anytime and leave anytime. It's a new topic each month, and then I give two lessons that come via audio, so you don't have to be on the phone and then um, you can listen to it on your iPod your phone and then there's a live mentor call with me where you can ask any question you want on the top of the month we have a, a guest expert every month and then there's a forum where they can ask questions 24 7 and I personally answer them and it's everything from marketing to how do you get like more in an abundant mentality how do you think like a, a CEO versus a healer, and it's not bad to think like a healer, but when you're trying to get money in the door and have a good life, you got to start thinking like a, a CEO and how can we make it all fun? How can mm. we make everything fun and do it your way 
and I'm just giving ideas. So it's a blend of here's some proven strategies that I've seen work, but here's more importantly, here's how you have to be in order to get any of this stuff to work. Because if you're, if you're not lined up with how you're feeling and if you're not being who you want to be in your business and playing like a person who is abundant, then none of the strategies in the world are going to work. And that's the bottom line, isn't it? Yep, always. Oh, that sounds amazing. So give us that web that um, URL again. It's businessflashpoint.com. Oh, thank you. Oh, and also Gina's got a free CD for all of you yes, that you yes, want to yes. check out too. It's Transforming from Chaotic Entrepreneur to Conscious Leader, the Five Keys to Pinpointing the Right Prescription for What Ails Your Business. So you're going to, going to want to take advantage of that. And that's at the other URL, the www masterpeacecoaching.com. So check out both those things. Oh, Gina, this has been so awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and energy with the listeners. I wish we had another two hours to just hear more and more and more. I know people are going to want to listen to this again and again. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. And everybody, don't forget to make it fun. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much, Gina. And for everyone listening, I'll be thinking of you and your business, and I'll be in my heart walking with you every step of the way as you use your superpower, your special gift, to get your work out in the world where it can begin transforming lives and transforming the world itself. So until next time, this is Kim Wilborn wishing you love and abundance.